Hola, and welcome back to another episode of Character Modeling with me, Steve Moore, aka Smore. Um, and uh, this this episode, I'm starting something new here, and um, this is going to be uh, more of a fast-paced, you know, just a few episodes sculpting, taking you guys through sculpting this little dragon here. And I, I kind of I think of this as kind of a concept sculpt. Uh, it's done. Uh, the majority is done in ZBrush, and then I just finished it in Substance Painter and uh, set it up in Marmoset. So, um, without further ado, let's get started. So, to begin this little project, the first, the very first thing we want to do is kind of set our scale, right? So, you, you know, people talk a lot about scale in ZBrush. It can be an issue. So, what I've done is I've gone ahead and created an image plane in Maya, which I'm about to import. What I want to talk about here is I created this image plane so that it's about the scale, about the size of the the dragon, the final product. And I, I did this in real world units. So I pretended for arguments, my, I pretended my dragon's about kind of three, four feet long, right? He's a little baby guy. So now what we have is an image plane that is scaled to be about the approximate size of our real world dragon. If our dragon was really uh, a little dude living in our, our world, he'd be about three or four feet long. And that's, and this, this little plane here is about three or four feet long in uh, measured in centimeters. And uh, what you'll notice, so what you'll notice down here is under the export options, you'll see that it has a scale offset. So what, to the best of my um, understanding, ZBrush has its own units. So what happens is when we import our image plane, our object that we've made, you know, um, in Maya, it's going to create this, um, this kind of scale offset so that when it's exported back to Maya or to some other program like Marvelous Designer, Substance Painter, etc., um, it will it will use this value to kind of reset the scale so that it, it lands, you know, back in Maya at the same size that it, it began. Um, so there you go. So my process for keeping the scale consistent is I will import an object that I've already scaled into the scene. And then once I'm happy, I'll save the scene. And from the, the, here on out, I'm just going to append the scene. And to uh, begin with, to begin our little dragon, the very first thing I'm going to do is go down. You know, we're in the subtool menu here. I'm going to go down to append, and I'm going to pick uh, like a, just a standard 3D cube here. And there you go. So I now have our image plane, and I have the beginnings of a dragon. So before I go any further, let's just talk about the brushes I have down here. Down the bottom of my screen, I have my brush palette. And if you go up to the brush palette, uh, this can be overwhelming. You've got like awful lot of different options here. Um, and the, the truth is you, you, you really don't need that many brushes. Um, you know, you'll find the ones you like. These are the ones I find myself predominantly using for my, for my own kind of approach. Um, clay buildup is good for sculpting, you know, um, transpose for moving things around, trim dynamic for, for planing things planning things off. Move topology is really useful because it kind of, it can recognize when a piece of geometry is in front of another piece and it, you know, so you can kind of get in there and move, you know, things around uh, smartly. Uh, move, move is similar, but move is more of a brute force, just uh, move tall. Z project uh, is useful for projecting uh, one mesh onto another. Pinch uh, for sharpening things up. This is this, you know, pinches is very good for kind of, you can see how it's pinching everything together there. Inflate for just kind of, you know, swelling, making things fat and inver inversely thinner. And finally, the morph brush I use a lot, um, and we'll get into that uh, later. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I use the morph brush um, later down the line. But there you go. So for now, let's start with the transpose brush. Transpose brush, by the way, if you... Uh, hit the little magnet key you can move the uh, pivot point around 
um, and you can reorientate it too. Like if it gets a little bit off kilter, for example, you can just hit the reorient button, turn the magnet off, and you're back to moving the whole mesh. So it, it allows you, the transpose brush is great. It allows you to, to move the thing. It also enables you to scale your mesh like so. So this is, so we're gonna start by, we're gonna start by just making some masses. We're gonna block this guy out. All right, so from the top here, um, just kind of made a 3D mesh and I'm just scaling these things super approximately using my image plane as a guide. And now we're coming in with the clay buildup and carving that stuff out, right? Just trying to make the basic masses for the dragon. So using the transpose brush to move and scale our basic shapes around, coming in with the clay build-up brush, which is a, an, an excellent brush for just carving, carving and adding to a shape. So I, I, use, I use clay build-up a lot, trying to get that basic form. And you'll notice I'm, I'm duplicating my existing masses a lot here as you know to, to kind of a quick way you know I've got a cube just duplicate it make another cube and off we go now we're, we're kind of carving out our face a bit not getting particularly detailed on any one area we want to get the we want to block the whole thing in and although you're not seeing it here I do have my I do have my concept on another desktop so I'm constantly referring to that. I'm not just sculpting blind here. I am looking at the concept as I sculpt. Using the trans, you see I'm using the transpose brush in combination with the mask tool. So I'm able to mask one area of it off and then scale up another area. And that way you can, you can kind of taper something like we did with the, the tail. I was able to taper the tail by masking sections off and scaling sections down um, to get that kind of, you know, it's a bit rough, but it, it's, if you, tr if you just want to stay in ZBrush, you don't want to muck around, um, that's one approach to it. And of course, this is an, you know, this is a character, it's an organic shape, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect, you know, perfectly smooth tape. In fact, those, those little irregularities kind of help to add some personality, I think, you know? It's starting to look, you know, starting to look like something. It comes together pretty quickly. I like this approach too because it's, um, you know, an old school way might be to kind of subdivide, sub, you know, to model the whole thing in Meyer. This is so much easier. It's just like, obviously, it's just like making clay, you know, taking clays, lumps of clay, and throwing the masses together. It's a little tricky too because my concept has. Uh, the tails all wiggly and I drew it but you know what we're trying to do here is initially I'm going to sculpt this guy in a in a kind of what I call a bind pose like he's going to be symmetrical save us time sculpting one half um, and then once I've got the the basic masses we'll then pose it so right now we're trying to imagine um, the proportions of this guy if he was in the bind pose if he was in kind of a symmetrical rigid pose um you know which which is just gonna it's always gonna be challenging so you go you just go back and forth a lot you know you, you know sometimes sometimes often actually i'll say when i'm sculpting i'll i'll end a session and i'll think it looks my model i'll be really happy with my model i'll come back the next day and they'll see like everything that's wrong with it you know that happens i think that happens to us all it happens you know a lot so actually one of the one of the greatest tools for an artist i think is just um, distance, just getting some, you know, sometimes just getting some distance and time and space from what you're working on so you can look at it with fresh eyes. So here we're, here we're, same process, blocking in his front leg. And uh, at this time I'm using cylinders too. I'm using, you know, again, just the standard 3D uh, meshes under the append tool. 
Um, they come with ZBrush, um, but in this case it's a cylinder. I'm just going to start a little closer to what I want in the final mass. And uh, th this guy's little toes, um, it's got those little toes right now. Uh, I kind of imagined them when I was drawing it. I imagined uh, he's he's kind of like he's a dragon, but he's he's based to be to be honest. He's based on a cat. If you took a cat and you crossed a cat with a lizard for the feet, so he's kind of got like a cat-like face, and he's got kind of lizard toes. And then I would say his his tails and, and his his body's little fat body's kind of inspired by a lizard, I think, and a cat little you know, lion cub, and maybe the tails influenced by a crocodile, and then finally he's got these bat-like wings, so I've, I've morphed, I've meshed together a crocodile, a cat, a crocodile, a lizard, and a bat, I would say, what kind of my influences for this guy. All right, so let's, I'm just going to power through the next section here, just continuing to block our little dude out. making the wings out of cylinders starting to look like a dragon I think you know throw on those wings Bob's your auntie you got a dragon Now I just want to make a little guide eyeball. Um, you know, this this initial one, I just like to make a sphere, you know, and poly, a little poly paint. And the the toy shader I like um, for eyes, you know, has that nice hot um, specular highlight. You know, so that works that works good for just a rough eye. For my next trick, ladies and gentlemen, I'm making the eyelids. Uh, again, I'm starting with a sphere and just kind of slicing it in half and using that to shape my eyelids. Later on, we're going to mesh this, remesh this whole thing together into one piece. Um, but yeah, this I find this, this is a lot easier than trying to carve out the details of an eyelid. I just, just make them separate um, and that, that works well enough. Okay, so now I'm going to take this leg masses here and do a, a quick dyna mesh so that they become one mesh and we can sculpt over the results. So my plan here is to keep the legs separate so we can pose those individually um, and you know obviously the, we're going to keep the body, the legs and the wings separate so we can pose those um, later 
and we're just sculpting over it, starting to refine those shapes. So for the wing, I started with just a, a, a flat plane. Once again, using the pen tool and grabbing um, one of the, the default 3D meshes from that ZBrush has. Um, and in this case, what I'm doing is using poly paint to kind of sketch out the shape of the wing. I'm using black and white um, strictly for this. And the reason I'm and what I'm going to do here is is use this as a mask. So once I've got my my wing filled in, I will convert that to a mask using uh, mask by intensity. Cool. So now we've got our mask, and I convert, and then I'm using that mask to convert to a poly group, and then that's allowing me to add some edge loops you know some group loops to sharpen up the um the edge of our our shape our wing shape here and and separate it you know once once we're reasonably happy with that i've i threw a quick z remesh on it to kind of clean up the topology and i'm you know masking once again i'm kind of masking up the arms of the wing and then i'm so this will kind of let me then use the move brush in between to kind of give it a bit of a, a bit of um, dynamism, a bit of, you know, a bit of personality there. So rather than a perfectly flat wing, it's got some, what would you call scalloping to it. You know, so, so it looks a little bit more natural. So once, once we've done that, once we've got our wing shape right, uh, we can then go and use the extract tool to uh, give the wing some thickness you just mask it, it extract and you can specify how thick you want the wing to be I'm just uh, skipping ahead a bit here um, and looking at the tail 
So for the tail, um, I used the transpose tool to pose it. And the process was I, I set my pivot point mask in here, kind of blur it, blur it. So that creates a nice fall off. And then I rotate um, the, a segment at a time. So I kind of start from the base of the tail, you know, rotate a bit, move down, mask some more until and continue that process to the end. And then once I've got a, a nice uh, curve in the tail that I'm happy with, I then flip to the top. They just repeat the process from the top view so the idea is to get a nice kind of undulating curve in that tail in 3d space okay so next i wanted to add some fins to uh, my tail so i grabbed one of the the horns i'd made for the head um, and just repurposed that sculpted over it a little bit once i got the right shape um, it's just a matter of duplicate and scale that down the length of the tail a little bit of, you know rotating as needed um, and then later on I, I will dynamesh the whole thing into one into one clean contiguous mesh all right so at this point I'm reasonably happy with my little dragon and I'm starting to think about adding some bump detail and some and some color now, before doing that, I you can, of course, use poly paint, and that is what I will do initially, but um, it's good to, to throw some UVs on there, right? And and that's easily done, reasonably easily done, with uh, ZBrush's built-in plug-in uh, UV, I think it's called UV Master. Um, before applying UVs, I did run these meshes, the meshes through ZRemesh, um, and that was just so that I could reduce the kind of the density of the meshes, make them a little lighter. Um, that would make that makes it easier to apply UVs. Okay, so I've got my UVs in place. I'm now going to switch to poly paint mode. Um, and and if you don't know, poly paint is basically uh, colors applied on, um, per vertex. So it doesn't require any UVs, but uh, but the nice thing is. Uh, we can convert this to a texture later and that will enable me to paint a, a bunch of different kind of layers on the dragon and composite those etc make masks and what i want what i'm doing right now is sketching out kind of the scales and there's you know you could make a bump map your series of bump maps and apply your scales that way um, i'm going to do both and i just um, kind of like this approach it is actually, I think in its own way, it's, it's quite quick and, and I, I get nice organic results and I can, I can really control how, how the scales and, and details fall in there. And later on, this can also be used as a mask. So, so that's, what I, that's why I'm doing this right now. I'm painting, I'm painting a mask for my scales. I will repurpose this for the color map as well. Um, and there you go. Right, so once, if, um, once I'm happy with that mask, I converted it to a texture, took it into Photoshop for a little doctoring, and now back in ZBrush, I'm going to turn that, turn that poly paint data into a mask, literally. And from here, I used the, uh, under deformation, I used the inflate brush with a little bit of a negative value, just, a, just like a minus one, you know, depending on the scale of your model. Um, and then you can you can always tune the intensity with the you know if you have, if you do it on a layer you can tune the intensity with by just reducing the opacity of the layer which is what I did I took it kind of you know to like you know like half half fifty percent opacity and that that got me the results I wanted um, and now and now um, I'm going to add some color to the sucker so here you'll see I've brought in another version of my image plane I've I've sampled some of the kind of the, the general colors from my concept and I'm just literally dropping those on the model as poly paint data my uh, scale mask was saved as a texture map so we'll be able to load that back in later and uh, use it to kind of add some cavity detail so I, I'm, I'm really having a blast here with the poly paint um, I think like a lot of artists, I found that it helps even before the model is finished. And, you know, even when I'm blocking the model out, 
I'll throw colors, sometimes grayscale values, sometimes color on a model, uh, particularly if I'm working from a concept, um, because it helps you to see it. So whilst I'm still sculpting this model, I, it, you know, putting the colors on it and comparing it to the concept helps me to visualize, you know, and I, I'm a big believer in whatever, whatever helps get the job done, you know, I'm in, I'm in favor, of, you know, I, so putting some colors on there, it, it's amazing how, how much easier it is to see the shapes and the forms and to see maybe what's not quite working right. Um, it's like being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I, I can visualize where this is going and it, and that kind of gives me that excite the energy it kind of gives me a bit of a boost like oh yeah this is going to work and you know i can keep and it kind of keeps me going all right i think that's probably enough for this session next time we'll look at posing and we'll give him a little rock to sit on that that should be fun and then ultimately you'll be off to substance painter and marmoset with some proper shaders until next time happy modeling take care ciao Yum 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 y